What's up YouTube? Today we're going to talk about how I ruined a proof research barrel and a Surefire War Comp. And if you'll stay till the end, I'm going to tell you how you can avoid doing the same thing because I promise you, you don't want to ruin one of these barrels that cost too damn much. Um, I'm also going to give a shameless plug at the end about our new holster line coming out. Uh, at first it's going to be aimed at CZs because we are CZ fanatics over here, but uh, we're going to carry it out to all the other lines as well. So stay tuned if you're interested in that. I know you're going to really like the holsters. The very first thing I want to say is this is not a knock against Surefire or Proof Research or their product because neither one of them did anything wrong. There was nothing wrong with their product. It's really just a uh, lack of knowledge on my part, maybe a lack of communication of that knowledge uh, that uh, I wasn't able to uh, accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. And we're going to go into that here in just a second. Uh, on the contrary, I want to say that Surefire's customer service was exceptional. It was the best that I've ever had in anything I've ever dealt with. Uh, at, in the end, they actually replaced the Proof Research Barrel and they replaced the Surefire War Comp. Um, and they were just so helpful throughout the entire process. And I'll go into that here in just a minute as we go through what happened. So first, what happened? So I bought a Proof Research Barrel. I was going to put a Surefire War Comp on there. The war comp is designed that you can tune the war comp exactly to how you want it to compensate for recoil. You can have it slightly to one side. You can have it straight up and down. And so I set out with, the, with that knowledge and that I was going to put this on there and I was going to test it at the range at different degrees of uh, rotation on here so I could see what I like the best, what worked for me the best. Just kind of play around and experiment, right? And so in doing that, I didn't want to start off by putting the rock set on there. If I had put the rock set on there, obviously it was locked in. I wouldn't be able to come back later, make the adjustments, and I wouldn't be able to play around and see what works best for me. So first thing I did was I watched uh, Surefire's video on how to install the uh, War Comp. And what they suggested was is they suggested that you clean and degrease the threads on both the war comp and on the barrel that you're going to be applying it to. In that video, he was taking a, another compensator or another flash suppressor off of a already used barrel and he was going to replace it with one of these. And he showed the process of how he cleaned and degreased it uh, before he was going to put this new one on. And um, so that means that it was already a seasoned barrel, meaning that the threads had already kind of gotten worn in some and um, they weren't brand new full threads. And that's pretty important in what, in what happened here. So I followed the instructions. I cleaned, I degreased, I even took an air compressor, blew it off, made sure everything was nice and dry. And I put on the, uh, the war comp and I began to uh, slowly twist it on. Whenever I slowly twisted it on, I thought in my mind, I thought, wow, these are like, this is like the tightest tolerances I've ever had on anything. It fit absolutely perfect on there. And it was slightly firm, but it went on, went on very well. Got about four or five full rotations through there and it just stopped all of a sudden. It, it would not move anymore. Mind you, I'm doing this with my hand, right? And so I was a little bit puzzled by that, and I tried to take it off. When I tried to take it off, it wouldn't budge. Long story short, I finally had to ultimately get a breaker bar, and I had to break it loose from the barrel. And uh, whenever I did that, a lot of the metal from the threads of the uh, barrel were lodged inside the threads of the Surefire War Comp. And the... Um, the threads on the barrel were completely galled, ruined, uh, up to about the fourth or fifth, um, the fourth or fifth uh, thread on there. Uh, as soon as it happened, I mean, I got all these beads of sweat on me, and I was like, "Man, I must have done something wrong." I thought, you know, the first thing that came to my mind is I must have cross-threaded this barrel, uh, but that was confusing to me because, you know, I know what it feels like when something is cross-threaded. It, it doesn't make four or five solid uh, 360 degree rotations, right? So I was a little bit confused by it. I began to research online and look around. I had seen where some people maybe had the same problem 
Um, and I decided I would call Proof Research. So I called Proof Research, and they actually immediately told me which compensator uh, I had used without me telling them. And so I thought that was a little bit strange that they were already had some foreknowledge of this being a problem. And uh, they suggested that I contacted Surefire. So contacted Surefire. The guy was immediately super helpful, told me to just send both of them in and they would take care of it. Whatever that meant at the time, I wasn't sure, but they said that they would take care of it. So ultimately, I um, came in contact with a guy in communication through email who was the head of the suppressor department. And we began to communicate back and forth about uh, what had happened. And on my own research, I had started to kind of determine what happened. And that's something called cold welding, or some of you might uh, refer to it just as galling. So what is cold welding? Cold welding is whenever two surfaces rub against each other of the exact same type of metal, and the heat from the friction causes them on a microscopic level to weld together, literally to weld together. And that's what happened here. The reasons this happened, it's kind of twofold. First of all, the proof research barrel is made with class three threads. The Surefire War Comp is made with class two threads. Now, the reason I figured that out and the reason I found out that that was a problem because I had watched video on School of the American Rifle. Most of you probably know who that is. Uh, great channel, really in depth on a lot of this. I had watched so many videos before uh, putting this gun together. And in that video, he tests the threads. And he spoke about how there were class one, class two, and class three. And there's nothing wrong with any of the classes. You just have to make sure that the classes of the threads match up with each other. So what does the different classes mean? Uh, basically, class one threads are a little bit thinner. The, the wedge shape on there is a little bit more narrow. Uh, there's still the same number of threads per inch, still the same dimensions uh, diameter-wise, but they're a little bit thicker. They, they uh, spread out just a little bit more, uh, or excuse me, a little bit thinner on the class one. Class three is a little bit thicker and class two is right in the middle. So if you have class two uh, threads on your barrel, class two threads on your war cop, match them up, well, no problem. Those are fit to fit together well. If you were to have class one on, on one of the devices and class three on the other, it's okay too because you would have uh, one that's thin, one that's thick, and there's still some clearance there. The problem is, is one of these was class two and one of them was class three and it's the barrel that is class three. And so that's why I, whenever I was putting it on there, I felt like it was such a uh, tightly machined fit is because these were um, rubbing so close together, there wasn't much space between them uh, for them to, to have any wiggle room in there. Now, if you couple that with the fact that I completely degreased and cleaned this, there was nothing in there lubrication-wise uh, in order to allow the uh, compensator to go on there and reduce that friction and heat and prevent that kind of uh, cold welding of those two metals, the two materials. There is a solution to this. Uh, they were able to fit this war comp onto this barrel for me. Uh, this is a brand new barrel. And uh, then they took it off and they sent it back to me. The solution would be if you want to be able to put this on there, play with it like I was going to play with it, figure out which uh, uh, clocking or which uh, rotation works for you, is to go ahead and lubricate it, put the uh, compensator on there, feed it on there, and whenever you go to finally put the rock set on, then go ahead and clean and degrease and put the rock set on. That'll help with two things. One thing is, is by that time of putting this on, taking it off probably multiple times as you, uh, as you put the different spacers on there that are required to get uh, exactly the rotation that you want, you test it out, maybe you change the rotation. Uh, by that time, the 
threads on both devices are going to be seasoned pretty well. They're going to match up uh, pretty well, and you're not going to have that problem. So that is the solution that I would suggest. Lube it up, put it on there. Then you need to take the, uh, you need to use the degreaser, take everything off, and that way the rock set will set. Because the problem is the rock set doesn't set well if it's got grease on there. So that is the solution to this problem. Don't let it happen to you. Now for a shameless plug about our holsters. So we've uh, gone through great lengths. We have developed these by uh, 3D scanning all of the guns in. We use the actual guns. We um, build our models off, off of uh, CAD software, Fusion 360, and we use a CNC machine to cut the molds. We have literally tested probably 100 different molds, making sure that we get the best product that we can. This is our outside the waistband pancake style holster. Uh, it fits very snug to the body. Most of y'all are probably familiar with these. But we're also going to have many other types inside the waistband, outside the waistband. Uh, these are two examples of ones that can accommodate the Safari Land QLS system, but it's also got a whole pattern that accommodates many other holster attachments as well. This one's for the PO1 with the Streamlight TLR7. This one is for the Shadow 2. But like I said, we're going to support many of the other CZ pistols and we're going to carry it out to many other pistol lines as we go forward. So be on the lookout for our holsters. We'll put a video out whenever we release them and uh, pick one up. I believe that you'll be really satisfied with the quality of the product. So thank you for uh, being here and like and subscribe. And we'll be putting out more videos soon.